Hello my soccer universe, it's now about 24 hours that the last last game in this Europa League season has ended and I guess the bitterness that I was feeling this morning when I made the short video has a little bit dissipated although still there remains a slight sour taste for this group stage How, what helped me is of course seeing also the reactions of the coach and the players a very mature reaction I have to say overall and so yeah, um, I also see it from a different point that we'll talk in just a little bit. But I have to say, this Europa League uh, final match day, outside even of the last game, there were so many battles in there. I mean, there were almost, you know, we had only a few groups where we already had a group winner, but there were so many uh, big games, head-to-head, head-head-head games, for a group winner or even where teams that you thought are uh, fixed or have a good position going on, have been ousted, uh, it was really, really, really amazing. Uh, I want to start in Linz. group game on 14th of December honestly uh, the weather was kind of mild yes there was rain in the air but the entire game it didn't rain it only started to rain after the game and last had lost yeah I have to I was hoping personally for colder weather because I think this would have added to you know from start of teams from start of France are not used to uh, rougher con conditions and you know Toulouse went in a really rough shape into this uh, uh, game although I have to say uh, while last got a win uh, let's put it that as of late it has not been convincing because there has been a virus ever since the Liverpool game and and so it was not the high point you know in early November but in be it as it may I went in there with high hopes because I know in Linz there is everyone is up for grabs i would say there's always a chance uh they play well stadium was full uh it was a good at atmosphere so all fine so and so even a few uh quite a few french fans were there uh too and lusk really played well for the first 25 30 minutes created some chances and even more half chances definitely had control of the game and i had the same impression that i had the first time we met to lose this is a team that can be gotten at this is a this is not a good team and you could see this is a team that just lost to last place Lyon 3-0 this is a team that has little conf confidence this is a team that also knew that we have to get at least a point out of, out of this if we want to go on in the europa league and the one strength that this team has is a good counter-attacking style uh, as soon as you let up the press they will hit you and after about 30 minutes uh, that's exactly what happened and then even Laval needed to make a few good saves but I have to say of all the teams that I've seen there yes we dominate Union Zanchez with us but I, didn't, I, I still think that this Toulouse team is the weakest team that Lask have played I don't know how they got that many points in this group I really do not uh, and how they even could beat Liverpool in a way. Yes, we'll, 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 we'll get to Liverpool a little bit later. But this is the one thing that annoys me in this one, that I really think that you were at least eye level and you get zero points out of the two games against Toulouse. Uh, the kind of wobble also started in early in the second half and then the Linga, they got completely caught on a counter where Tears falls over and suddenly uh, Pinar can play it uh, really nicely over to, to the Linga who makes it right in front of us 1-0. At um, this point I don't want to say against the run or roughly but it happened. Uh, but fortunately, Lask then actually picked themselves as well up, created and chances in Ljubicic after a cross from Stojkovic, a really great glancing header from a very difficult angle. One more. Oh! 
and I really thought they're gonna push on. And that's exactly what, what they did. They really put uh, pressure on Toulouse, opened themselves up, made the substitution such, where they became more and more offensive. And of course, you get the card on another card like against Suazo. Covers that one, and it's 2 1 for Toulouse. Credit to the Toulouse fan who climbed, uh, climbed the fence. Salah look like and then dancing on the top of the fence was really, really uh, amusing, but you know, maybe not the prettiest of sights either, but you know. So yeah, I don't know. I think at last should have deserved at least a draw out of this one. Um, they probably were even good for the win, but you know, if you get caught on the counter that cheaply, both goals were relatively cheap. I guess this is where you pay for your European in 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 experience. But if I look at the balance of play, it was a very even game overall with always slight edge lusk. So losing that one does hurt a little bit. Um, again, this to lose them is nothing special. Absolutely nothing special. Also nothing special is the referee. Uh, again, for the third time in the Europa League, we had an Italian re re referee, but with Maresca, honestly, one of the worst Italian re referees. He always, it, now I, I should not use the word always, but we definitely didn't get the rub of the referee. Let's put it that way. Uh, he so nitpicky and a tackle by Toulouse, he let go. Uh, for last, it was usually a yellow card or a stern wa a warning, especially when he was thinking that to give Jules a red card. I just thought that I'm losing it. The other, uh, other thing I'm losing, and um, I understand if I'm in the winning position, I probably would ask for, for the same thing, but you know, uh, Toulouse had the lead, they went then deep towards the corner. Uh, 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 you know, didn't even attack the la last goal, but uh, went to the corner flag and then tried to play it out there. Uh, this is annoying. This is annoying. It annoys me almost every time. This reminds me so much of when a basketball game, a type basketball finishes with a lot, a lot of fouls and free throws. It kills the game. And I blame all the FIFA players out there and I think this is something that needs to be looked at. Now, uh, silver lining. Yes, I would have liked to see the win because, you know, Points for Austria, also money for Alaska, but that is needed. We built the stadium. It would not have helped. And on one side, it's a solid on, on the other side, it really, really annoys me. Liverpool, of course, they're going to play the kids, or, you know, a, a second string li lineup. They've been doing it the all of the Europa League season. And that's fine. But being completely outplayed by Union Saint Gilles and 2-1 being actually a favorable scoreline for, for them. Yes, you got a nice equalizer through Kwanzaa. I really have to ask questions. And why it annoys me is first, the loss against Toulouse with the get a win there, or even even the round you already are through. So they made it everything that, you know, you lose there, so you need to win the game at home against Lusk. And of course, the first game we had also, you had at Lusk, which you, of course, you also won, but why am I to get the win? So to lose and uh, USG got a little bit the easier route from Liverpool there, and that annoys the heck out of me. It really does. And, you know, uh, let's put it that way. I'm not sure if I fully agree with that, but yesterday the annoyance at Liverpool was really, really high during the game. When it was clear at the half, half time, Union Saint-Germain have a 2-1 lead. There was a lot of cursing going towards Liverpool. And yeah, um, I have to see it on the other side as well. Um, it's not down to Liverpool. They, they have the right to do that. I understand that. It just annoys me because, uh, you know, they had to play full full on against us twice and they let it slide against Toulouse away from home and yeah again the last game so be it um on the other side you have to thank liverpool at least if you're the club lead leadership because thanks to the to the draw liverpool uh you sold out all three games and you could ask for the most expensive tickets in all of the europa league to do so so i guess there's the give and take and lastly um it wouldn't have mattered if Liverpool, uh, the two losses that Liverpool have, uh, Lask should have gotten a point in Toulouse, Lask should have gotten a point at Union saint uh, And in that, if that happens, you already look better in the last, last game, you don't have to go all out and you probably can win against Toulouse as well. And then you're sitting at eight points and you have the Conference League. Because expectations were at the beginning of this uh, group stage, at least mine was, 
that maybe will get a win, but not much more because I knew this will be tough opponents. And that's exactly what happened. So yeah, let's finish Group E. Um, a little bit bittersweet. I think it was great to see the games, especially great to have Liverpool here. The wonderful win against Union saint as We won the head-to-head -head, uh, against Union saint uh Against Toulouse, I still don't know how those got 11 points and that lost didn't get a single point against them. But then again, it has been a threat throughout the season, not converting the chances. That's maybe the one real downside that the last pass never really found uh, the right person. And so, yeah, um, I guess you were the greenest team in the entire group stage uh, in Group E. And so, yeah, last place onward, upward, at least now Salzburg and Laska all both out of Europe. Um, and that means that both of them can concentrate on the championship, which I probably is not the worst thing. Because I wouldn't like if Laska would have to play in Europe still and, Las and Salzburg is completely out of it. So, you know, again, silver linings. But... Having said all that, let's move to all the other groups. Quick wardrobe change to spot the Prague, one of the surprise qualifiers. And, you know, we have another one in uh, Rangers up there as well. As I said, uh, it was a really, really interesting evening. And let's start with Group F, another group that was really tight. Had two uh, finals in a way, a final for the Conference League spot and a final to avoid the playoff. Let's start the Conference League final. We have Panathinaikos dominating Maccabi Haifa. Uh, Maccabi Haifa was really, really effective. Scoring to David and Cherie, uh having a Tuni lead. Uh, there were some chances for Panathinaikos in there. Missing that. Uh, they just have to go in. It was one of these days where you can try and try and try and you're not scoring. The goal through Yanidis in the 89th and the draw would have been enough for Panathinaikos. Um, was a more accidental uh, header because the cross comes in, hits him uh, inadvertently, it goes in, in into the net. It's a little bit too late and it's actually a big disappointment for Panathinaikos. Uh, Greek teams have been doing well in qualifying, but especially two Athens teams have not been uh, great, at least yesterday. And then the game between Rennes and Villarreal was probably the best of the entire Europa League evening. Crazy scenes, absolutely crazy, crazy. It took a Moreno penalty to get things going, but then off the kickoff, Asinio gets the Iki, the Iki equalizer. Then uh, there were some curious scenes in there and some, um, you know, a back pass that should that, that was not given. Um, then a foul, a penalty foul for Villarreal. It, it, it was really crazy at the end of the first half. Villarreal strikes then Achomash uh, in the second half to make it 2-1. Uh, However, Ludwig Blas in the 79th gets an equalizer. Equalizer would have meant that Ren actually win this group. However, uh, Parejo, just a minute later, re-establishes the lead. And then Ren thought they had an e e equalizer after a um, free kick. However, it's turned on attack tag technicality where uh, the free kick taker took a second touch and you're not allowed, 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 allowed to do it so it didn't count and so Villarreal win this group a group where they started with a loss but then actually cruising relatively through it but uh, this was a crazy game absolutely great game overall in group G it was for the group win where Roma needed a win and hoped that Slavia Prague do not well Roma scored early through Lukaku, who else? And then Zalewski also uh, assists Belotti. But at that point, then it got through that Slavia were also up with 4-0 easy at the halftime. 4-0 win. And then yeah, I just want to mention Pizzilli. Um, he's a Roma talent, gets in the 93rd or 3rd minute his first goal for Roma. Uh, as I said, Slavia, it was all in the first half. Dudera, Schranz, Kittil, then with, with, with a brace. Uh, Pretty big win over Servet game. We were just hapless and out of sorts in this game. And then the last one, it seemed tight, but given that Molde had had, had to go to Leverkusen, we always knew that Karabakh had the advantage. Karabakh beat Hecken. Molde would have needed a win over Leverkusen. That was never on the cards. 3 0 at the half. It was 5 0. Uh, Schick, Tapsoba, an own goal, and twice Hlosek before Kitulano pulls from back. So Molde go into the Conf Conference League, whereas Leverkusen are the only perfect team in this year's Europa League. And this is what you do. You're a great team. You win all your group games. Just putting it out there for some other teams that did not do that. Then let's move to the late games. Uh, the Olympiakos game against Pachka Topola was, you know, 5-2. Olympiakos are through to the... Um, 
uh, through to the uh, Conference League, uh, but it was first place between West Ham and Freiburg. Yeah, West 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 Ham uh, relat with relative ease, Kudos and Alvarez scoring in the first half. So uh, West Ham win this this group. Then and again a group with two finals, Ajax. To make it to the conference, need to beat Ajax. Ajax who started actually brightly in this group and then kind of fell away. Uh, Ajax be win this one 3 1. Uh, Akbom, I think, uh, double scorer. Garcia got an equalizer in the 11th, so 5th, 11, and then Kenneth Taylor in 20. So the goals came, came early, then Akbom made, made, made 3 1 at that point. Ajax going through. Ajax probably finally finding a little bit of a form. They go in the conference league where I don't think they're without chances, to be honest. The group win uh, was a tight game. Ugly oh, Marseille jersey, but you've seen my Europa League jersey review. Um, Overall, I gotta say that um, Brighton controlled a little bit more, but I really thought that I must say we'll see this out and the 88th Joao Pedro gets the, 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 the winning goal. And Brighton, after starting a loss to Ajax, actually win this group. Uh, it's pretty good, but also shows the power of the Premier League. Marseille needs to go into the playoffs. Then another crazy group uh, was Betis. Just needed a point at home to secure a pathway to the next round. If they win, they actually win the group. But they play against Rangers. Sparta actually put their name into the lottery, if you would like, and get a win at Aris Limassol. 3-1, relatively easy. And then Rangers really give Betis a run for, for the money. Sima, 10th minute, but Miranda, after Borja Iglesias' assist in the 14th, gets an equalizer. Uh, Dessas then re the lead, and then a uh, really nice Isco assist to per Ayose Perez. Makes it 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Betis is pressing to get the winner, however, they get caught out and uh, Roof gets a winner for Rangers and Betis are out of the Europa League. That no one expected, honestly, and is one of the bigger shocks. Rangers and Sparta Praha, the team that I'm wearing and the team that's up there, moving on in this group. A little bit unexpected, but then when I look at Betis' uh, re record with three losses, yeah, I guess this is what we were calling out for. Atalanta had already won the group uh, ahead of Sporting, so it was only for third place. And what a mad race that was. Because both teams were losing badly. I mean, uh, Sturm Graz knew that they couldn't lose, they could lose by the same scoreline as Rakov, but it came really down to goal dif difference and then away goals. So if uh, the goal difference was the same, away goals would have uh, um, decided in favor of Rakov. And at one point, both teams were down 3 0. And if Rakov would have scored a goal, that would have leveled it out and would have pulled everything for Rakov and then Atalanta de Catalara scores a fourth goal. But I have rarely seen a team losing 3-0 as Sturm did. And then the final whistle blows and there are some Sturm players raising their hands in, in the air when they were completely outplayed by Sporting. On like most Austrian teams, because I don't know if you know, but there is a history with sporting against Austrian teams where I can tell you at least Salzburg, the old Austria Salzburg, Rapid Vienna, and also last completely outplayed them uh, unexpectedly as underdogs. And this time, Tatam Rush Dunkras did not do much against sporting, it went actually the other way around, although potentially they could have earned a draw at home. Yeah, Sturm Graz by the skin of the teeth going to the conference league players. We have at least one Austrian team advancing. Maybe good for the coefficient. I honestly ha thought that three have a good chance. The only one is disappointing for uh, the Austrian Bundesliga overall. So with all that, let's look at the draw. This is a playoff draw that will happen on Monday. So this is all the second place teams from the group. Freiburg, Marseille, Sparta, Sporting, Toulouse, Stadren, Roma and Karabakh against the third place teams from the Champions League. And there's some really, really interesting teams coming in. Galatasaray, Lens, Braga, Benfica, big name, Feyenoord, big name, Milan, probably the biggest name in there. Bearing Milan, my team. We have Young Boys from Bern, who I really hope will do well in there as well. And then we have Schachter, Donetsk. Meaning that actually have quite some restrictions in there because there are many French teams and many Portuguese teams in there. And these are the main restrictions. And also, you know, Roma cannot play Milan, though I would like to see that honestly. So uh, we have Lens coming down, cannot play Marseille, cannot play Toulouse, cannot play Stade Rennes. So unfortunately, we don't get one, which actually makes Sporting against Lens a very, very likely matchup, you know, still. 
<laughs> below 50%, but a rather likely one. And at the same, uh, to, to the same effect, not as risky as Sporting cannot play against Braga or Benfica, although we would love to see these as well. So yeah, get rid of the, re the, the restrictions. Um, now looking from a Milan pro perspective, who would I like? I actually would like Milan to play against Toulouse. Just because Lask has played at the game and I think they need to be taught the lesson because this is really not a good team. Uh, I do not want Marseille. <laughs> Although Gattuso's return to the San Siro would be something interesting. There's a lot of storyline there, but I don't I really don't want to see that. All the other teams, I'm cautiously optimistic, to be honest. OM I don't need. I really don't want to have OM. Uh, I'm still <laughs> I'm still uh, hurt from 93, to be honest. But yeah, the draw will happen on Monday. And let's see ahead of the draw, who are the favorites? Yes, Liverpool, 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 Liverpool. They are the highest rated team. They will eventually take it seriously. But let's see where it goes on. My money, honestly, is a little bit on Leverkusen. Uh, I know, I know. Never Kusen, But on the other side, this is a team that looks really, really convincing this year. And they look quite quite good. Uh, Brighton is also in there, and you see West Ham. So it's Leverkusen plus uh, the three remaining Premier League teams. Then followed by you know the Italians and poor poor, poor Portuguese as, as well as Villarreal. Uh, there's only one Spanish team left in there, which is also interesting for sure. Milan sit in sixth spot, level with Atalanta and Villarreal. However, Milan also have to go through the playoffs so without that Milan pro it would be higher I would actually think they might um, yeah I they might be ahead of West Ham there as well uh, other interesting teams in there you know Slavia Sporting Feyenoord Freiburg those are all interesting Rangers of course too uh, that probably could cause some trouble but I don't know if I see Rangers going on, on a run like they did a couple of years uh, go. In any case, I'm looking forward to the draw as well. You will get a, a reaction video to that for sure. Uh, probably Tuesday morning. Maybe let, let's see how it will go. In any case, please let me know how your team is doing in, in the Europa League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!